Reactions as Omoyele Shore claims that unknown madmen broke into his house in Abuja is a former presidential candidate of AAC, Omoyele Shore, and he has hinted how an unknown man came into his temporary abode in Abuja. I'm going to show you guys the Facebook post where he said this. He's the founder of the online news platform Sahara Reporters and he posted this on his social media platform. An unknown madman broke into my place of temporary abode. The federal government recently ordered the release of Omoyele Shore and a former national security advisor NSA Sambo Dasuki about a month ago. Let's quickly see his post on Facebook where he said this. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. said yesterday an unknown madman broke into my place of temporary abode in Abuja where I am currently restricted per court bail conditions issued by Justice Ijomo Juku of the Federal High Court, Abuja. I should report that I am safe. I was ensconced in a different part of the house during the, the fracas. That is just what he said. So let's see the other reactions from people as regards this. Um, a lot of Nigerians are concerned about this. And yes, yeah, someone writes, the Lord is your strength. I know these people want you dead, but God is greater than them. They fail and will continue to fail in their evil mission over you. And that is what I've thought about. I said, this young man that has been kept in custody, like house arrest somehow in a restricted house, um, place in Abuja, um, there is a possibility that these people might try to target and say some unknown people did this and that to him. Yes, yeah, someone write, Buari in disguise, it won't work. Thank you, Lord, for protection. Someone said, Alhamdulillah, God will continue to protect you. They will try in vain. Victory is yours. Now we are safe. Now, where is safe in this country? Daddy, please stay away from anywhere in Nigeria. Their evil hand cannot reach you. I won't worry. And I want to say, no weapon of enemies fashion against you shall prosper. And I want to say, thank now, wow, thank God you're safe. Please, more safety measures should be thought. And I want to say, slaves who are in leave. All right. So I think this one is talking about. Um, people, you know, anything to please your slave or paymaster, it's a sad reality of the country called Nigeria. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, what I see is how much people are so religious in Nigeria. And I went on to say, no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. They will be put to shame in Jesus' name. You know, it comes to a point whereby people feel that there's nothing else they can do and they are, want God to do it for them. And that's just what it is because they've been kept in a kind of situation, uh, brainwashed, and they feel that there's nothing else that can be done. Uh, but that doesn't mean we cannot thank God for life because if he had died and he couldn't you know, there, there wasn't a way for him to have gotten out of that situation. Um, it would be a very different story as he cannot have his own private security. So it is about him having CCTV and watching over himself in the night and making sure the doors are locked. Yeah, someone writes, we thank God for your life and others. Hope everyone is in good shape. Another person went forward to say, may their wishes and plans over you fail, no matter how many times they try, and whatever ploy and strategy they use, divine security is all over you. May you fulfill your God-given mandate over your life for humanity, amen, flying the wings of the Lord. And I want to say that is an indication that even the gods are not happy with anyone that believes Nigeria is redeemable. And I want to write, peace, peace. Now, someone has said, thank God for life, may God continue to protect you. They are looking for plausible deniability. And I want to say, President, new dimension, God will protect you always. Faithful God, nothing shall befall you. So what I see here are more about God, God, thank God for your life, thank God for your life, thank God for your life. Stay safe. And I want to write Malami as a madman. And I want to say, stay safe, my president. So I, I thought that um, if he is kept in that place and he's not allowed to leave Abuja, I expected certain security outfit to be having kept to protect him. But then, since it is a fight against this administration, they are ready to do just whatever it takes. For them to destroy anyone that goes against for them to destroy anyone that goes against them and no one writes but sir you need some amoteko in that place the canal who is his time has come Buari Frisha were ready to fulfill his dream so when you see all of these comments here and there you will realize that um it's a it's it's a very serious issue um some claim that Buari has paid some mad people to attack him they claim that this might be assassin and not mad people but assassins that are sent down there to deliberately find a way of you know handing his life and um, the story out there also is that a young lady that was uh, one of the activists that was with showere uh, right there um was also attacked by this same um, person they say our clothes were torn and a lot of very terrible things that they reported about this our clothes were torn she was dragged here and there 
this man that came into Shore's house, this unidentified man, who the neighbor claimed that he is mentally challenged, came in there on Sunday. And the, the problem now is that this guy is someone that cannot be identified. Omele Shore in Abuja said that this young man assaulted a female activist and also vandalized electronic items in the, in the process. The unknown man who sneaked into the apartment about 11 a.m. went straight into the living room and they said he sat down comfortably in front of the television set as if he is in his house. Now, is this a ploy like a decoy to act as if the guy is mentally deranged and he ends up killing Omoyele Shore, God forbid. So minutes later, they said this man walked into the kitchen but was up challenged by a few of Shore's friends inside of the house. They said he ignored every other person there and walked back to the back of the house, he started pacing from the front of the building to the back before one of the activist Shore's friend around that same, you know, in the same house challenged him. However, in the bid of the activist to ascertain where he came from and how he got into the resident where Shore is temporarily residing, this heavily built stranger charged at one of the female activists, rained several blows on her before tearing her clothes. Now, not done, this unknown man went further to grab the female activist by her hair, hair and slammed her on the ground. He went ahead to throw various objects in the city room at the television, set in an attempt to chatter the screen and also vandalize other electronic devices in the living room area. The stranger was, however, later subdued by the activist and handed over to the police personnel guarding the area and was taken away in a van. Shore, who was resting in another section of the apartment, was alerted to the situation shortly afterwards. The activist was released by the President Muhammad Buhari's regime, like I said before, after he spent a 143-day in an unjust incarceration for organizing a protest tag revolution now in August 2019. When he was arraigned before a federal high court in Abuja in September, the judge imposed stringent bill conditions on him in a case brought against him, trumped up charges by the Nigerian government. Shore has ever since then been restricted to Abuja, which is not supposed to be so because Abuja is not where Shore is originally domiciled. He is not registered in Abuja. He is from Ondo State. He should have been allowed to stay in the state if they really want to do whatever they need to do. But maybe they want him to be kept there so that they can come, out, come up easily with some kind of very funny scenario. So, he is going to be in Abuja for the duration of his trial, except the court changes its position and amends the bail condition. And I think they should because he can come up to tell them, sorry, I cannot afford to pay for my stay in this place. So, I need to go back to my parents' house where it is free and it is cheap for me to stay. The judge declaration also forbids the 48-year-old activist, Omo Elishore, from speaking to the press conditions that clearly infringes upon his fundamental human rights of freedom of movement and association as guaranteed by the Nigerian Constitution and Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You know, this, this is a very terrible time. Showare's trial gets on the way in February. In the case, the Nigerian government accused him of insulting President Muhammad Buhari and planning to bring down his regime by calling on all citizens to rise up and demand a better country for themselves. This was on August 5th. In, in, it's just a peaceful demonstration to demand a better life, a better leader, better everything for themselves. But unfortunately, they quickly looked for some certain loopholes in this and they came up with some stories and they claimed that he's abusing the president. The same person that used this platform during Good Lord Jonathan's era and they never saw it as an abuse of the president, but they felt it was comfortable for them. So this group of people are just mediocres. They are just hypocrites. That's all I see about every one of them. It's only about their own personal interest. If you work for them, in favor for them, they don't see any problem. If the court ruling is in favor, they claim that the court is so great, the court uh, is, is full of integrity, the judges and the lawyers, they are so perfect. But when the ruling is against their own personal decision, then they come up with stories such as the court has been 
corrupted, adulterated, and they've, it has been infiltrated with some people. And if this is done, this is done, that is done, they are going to do this. And a lot of threats that comes out there. So that's a terrible thing. We might look at this and say, well, this is nothing. Maybe it's just a, a, an ox, something. Someone just came in there and maybe it's just an ordinary mental person. What if, like I said, uh, it's one of those people that have been sent in there just to make sure that they snuff him out? What would have happened? Oh, they will say a madman, an unknown man came into the premises, then the um, the DSS, SSS, police, and the rest of them will keep on investigating, and there will be no answers that will be given. And that will be the end of Shore, and life moves on for some people out there. So it's time that we all need to lend our voice so that they can understand and know that we are all out there. No one should have to go through this. So that's what it is for now. If you're not a member of this channel, let us grow together by you tapping on the subscription button and the red notification icon bell below is just down there on your right it will alert you whenever our videos are uploaded thanks for stopping by